Today we have Rahil Gangji with us. Rahil is a professional golfer from India. He has been a pro since 2001, playing in many countries over the years. He has won several tournaments, three wins in India, a Masters win in China, and a Japan Golf Tour and Asian Tour win in Japan. So we are here to talk about the world of golf and especially life as a professional golfer. So Rahil, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Iman, for having me. Yeah. So Rahil, your journey has been very interesting. I like <laughs> to start from the beginning, right? That how did you get into golf? Did it begin as a hobby? And I guess what made you turn to pro? Well, so as a as a child growing up, um, I played a lot of sport. And golf was, wasn't was one of them at the age of nine. It wasn't one of them. Uh, my dad obviously saw that, you know, I was good at, at sport. So, and we were members at the Tolliganj Club in Calcutta. That's where I used to live. Um, we were members in Tolliganj Club. So he's like, you know, why don't you want, you know, try golf? It'll be fun. It's something you can play for a very, very long time. And um, I, I was like, yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's try. No problem. Um, so I did join a camp. That camp was uh, actually started by uh, Thai Airways. And uh, my first coach um, uh, at that camp uh, was a gentleman called, uh, what's his name? Um, I forget his name. Anyway, so that was the f first time I tried golf. And um, sorry, Alan Singh. Alan Singh is his name. Alan Singh. He, he worked or still works for Tata Steel, I'm not sure. But of course, I meet him on, on and off. Uh, sorry, Alan, for getting your name. <laughs> but it's been such a long time, you know. Um, yeah, he was my first coach. And I really liked the game. Um, picked it up. Uh, but, I, but my main sport was actually swimming and riding, riding horses. Um, I used to, yeah, I started riding horses when I was six. And I used to ride, started at, at the Tolligans Club also. And um, so I used to do that. Um, but really, seriously, we started playing golf when I was about 12, 13, you know. That's so, when, how old were you when you were at that camp by Alan Singh? Nine. I was nine years old. So, three years. And were you serious in those three years? No, I just played every sport there was to play. I used to play cricket in school. I used to swim for the school, um, swim for the club. Um, I used to ride horses in Tolligan's club. And, and then also started riding horses at the Fort William Riding Institute in Calcutta. And um, basically, we played football, all the, all the other sports that, that uh, any children would play at, in school. So I did all that. And um, the dad added golf to my, to my schedule. And it was fun. So that's at the age of 12, 13, that's when I started playing a little more seriously. He put me into uh, sub-junior events. And um, I made the first Indian team uh, in my life at the age of 14. So there was, it was funny because uh, my dad looked in, in the newspapers one day, he's like, hey, look, there's a write-up about these youngsters. They're, they're, four, they're 14 year olds. And, and this is when I was about 12. There are these 14 year old uh, kids, they're going to uh, Italy, a place called San Remo in Italy. It was the world sub junior uh, golf championship. And at that time I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know. He's like, maybe, you know, you can make, a te make the team one day. At that time, you know, as kids, you're like not thinking about much. You just, you just say, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then two years later, I was on that team. So for me, it was like a little bit unreal. Um, but I got to give this to my dad. Uh, may his uh, soul rest in peace. He saw into the future. He was quite, uh, quite, you know, far-sighted uh, for even back then in the day, like, I don't know how, but he just saw that golf was a great sport to be in. He's, you can play it for such a long time. Um, of course, the money back then wasn't uh, too much. It wasn't even an, a thought at that time I was going to turn pro. But he was like, you know, it's great to meet people. It's it's a good sport to play. Right. So that's how I started playing on a more regular basis. And I would play the All India Sub Junior Circuit. We only we must have had like only a handful of tournaments, like seven, eight tournaments, maybe less, five tournaments or something like that. You know, back then there was no real th that many events happening, etc. So even as a junior, there was not that many events happening. We'd have like seven, eight events happening. Um, but I I was part of it, 
um, grew up with a lot of boys uh, from the north, few from the south. So became friends, and um, yeah, a lot of them are still my friends, but very few of them play professional golf, unfortunately. Wow. Uh, and w- sorry, I have to going back a bit. Was your dad a good golf player? No, didn't didn't play golf when he started. He he started because I started. Uh, my uncle though, who uh, didn't live in Calcutta at that time, he used to play golf a little bit on and off, you know. And um, that was the only family member who actually played golf. And I had never seen him play golf either. <laughs> so <laughs> golf wasn't really uh, part of. Um, uh, the family sports <laughs> schedule so in swimming was wow. yeah. no, i mean that's the curious part right? that it's not that you come from a golfing family no not at all that to nudge you that hey this can be a great yes. sport to play for life yes kudos to him yeah. it's tremendous it's tremendous it, it, it really is i mean there was not many tournaments happening but somehow he saw that this is a good sport it actually i mean beyond just looking at it as a profession the sport itself i i now believe it's it's not just only a sport it's like a lifestyle it it just encompasses everything that you do it it basically looks at every aspect of your life in a way where there's a lot of uh, dedication there's a lot of sacrifice there's a lot of honor uh, you know there's integrity involved in this game um, so honesty all these things uh, start flying around these these words start flying around because that's what this game is all about it it really tests you and um makes you live your life in a very in a good way i think so yeah and so when you started you made that first all india tournament i did yes and how was your showing do you remember yeah when i do remember that- it, in fact as bad as my memory is i still remember that event um we played in the De- delhi golf club we played the uh, the trials in the delhi golf club and uh, they were taking three boys and one girl um of course uh, there's a friend of mine who finished first his name was zaik ibgen may his soul rest in peace he's also passed on um so then there was another guy called krishan bir singh he um, i don't think he plays amateur golf also anymore he's he lives in london i think now and um, there was me and then there was my good friend uh, shiv kapoor's sister Shiv Kapoor mm-hmm. lives now in in, in Dubai. Um, his sister uh, made that team as the only as a top girl. So, in fact, that's when I met Shiv also when I went on that trip. Um, so we all went to uh, Italy, San Remo. The manager was a gentleman called uh, Brandon De Souza. He was also from Calcutta, and I knew him. He was he also became my coach later on uh, for a short period, and. Uh, brilliant fellow uh, he was our manager non playing manager obviously <laughs> um so we went to san remo and it was my eyes opened up to the the world of golf where i was like there are these 14 year old kids who are a foot taller than me hitting the ball 50 yards past me and hitting the, the ball onto the green and and spinning the ball back etc something that no 14 year old guy in uh, in india could imagine doing you know they these guys were bigger stronger you know they were more focused somehow and um played really really good golf so it opened my eyes to what is required to play you know at that level at a, at a good level um i remember i finished something like 52nd or something out of 100 and whatever 20 players um i would say okay an okay start for me right um the other boys i can't remember what they finished but uh it was it was a good good outing and then from there on it was uh, just few events in india now such a showing that you were let's say 50 second and you clearly saw someone or many people who were mm-hmm. let's say physically at an advanced level compared to you yes. game wise also that can be a fight or flight scenario right you could have said this is it no yes. no way that i can i can be at this level and they are just 14 you know there's an entire yes. career ahead of them Correct. What made you say that, you know, I can do this, or I'd like to do this? Well, at that time, we're not thinking as far ahead. We just enjoy the fact that I made a team. I knew, and my dad knew, uh, my family knew that I had some sort of skill. <laughs> thank God. And uh, 
pursuing it was uh, a much later call pursuing it professionally was a later, much later call but just going ahead and saying you know let's play more events in india that was right. um, quite evident i mean like you know if you if you can make a team that that's the indian team i think you have some sort of skill so let's play some events and that was how we went about doing that there was not much much and much planning about it there was just uh, regular you know there's an event we'll go there there's another event we'll go there so that's how it happened with me it's and you know when there's there wasn't that much professionalism um in golf at that point in time um so there was it was just quite all ad hoc let's do this and let's do that kind of thing with the dekhi jayegi kind of attitude you know is uh, what we went through but uh, that's how it started off and from that point onwards what made you say that i can make you know a career as a pro like yeah that that that, that decision came when i was about 22 it was much after i finished school i had finished college and i made it a point my dad mom definitely made it a point that you are going to finish college and then turn pro because back then the, the money wasn't much in professional golf right there you have to have a plan b right. and what's your plan b what if you have an injury this that you know all these questions that most professionals or professional uh professionals parents ask them themselves before they jump into this is that you know what if something happens to you what are you going to do uh, other than play golf to tell you the truth there are a lot of people who look back and say i do, i really don't know what I, what i would have done you know if golf didn't work out i i don't know what we would have done no I'm plan like, b there was no really there's no plan b um god will we made it you know it was it was good um but so i i played that event in when i was 14 years old my next indian team i made only when i was 19 when i finished school so for that period in between i never traveled out out of the country i just played sub junior and then junior events so and then i turned turned amateur and uh, after school and i was like okay i'll go play play some golf let's see where this goes it it, it was there was still no like i hadn't met my coach ajay gupta yet there was no plan yet there was just like play golf play golf play golf and um then i think it was when i was 19 years old i met my my coach who took me under his wing i was way back in the rankings in the junior rankings at the point in the amateur rankings at that point i think in the in the teens 14 15 i think i was and i was just playing golf you know just like that then i met him uh, at a uh, another quali- qualification for the asian games um which i miserably failed at <laughs> uh, but he he was dropping me back uh, somewhere in delhi and um, that's how i met him i dropped me in his car and uh, i remember him his first words were like um, he he knew who i was i said how do you know my name he's like his, his reply was cuz i'm god <laughs> <laughs> so you know joking obviously joking but that's the kind of man uh, ajay gupta is and he's been my my coach ever since i was 19 years old i'm 44 now so still yeah, your coach uh, still my coach yeah and uh, a, a really very, a really good coach at that wow. I, i must wonderful say. man it's been it's been a wonderful journey with him um he's a task master but i for for good reason he uh, he really expects the best out of you and he expects you to give your all so that's basically what we want as a former coach interesting and did you have any other indian role models at the time because all i remember i'm a sports nut right so yes. my day would begin back then with the newspaper and right. i would just flip over to the last page because it yeah. had all the sports you know information yes after all the articles on cricket and everything there would be something about golf uh, every now and then and there was probably jeev milka singh is who i remember correct jeev right and then arjun atwal yeah yeah these so, three the stalwarts of, of of indian golf um they were the first ones to do something with the game and uh, oh kudos to them because they went out and did stuff on their own when well basically they led the way you know they showed us that this is possible they showed us that we can do it 
and i think a lot of amateurs at that point were were quite inspired by them so uh that's when it started with with uh, with, with them leading the way so it was easy to talk to them and and get their tips get their insights not really not really we just heard their name there were this there were these uh, there were these names just in the sky somewhere you know yeah. <laughs> never met them never seen them you know that kind of a thing um we had seen them play but even though arjun i i knew arjun first because he his parents lived in uh, calcutta and um he would very rarely but he would come to calcutta to meet them because he would he would study in the states and then um, during the summer holidays he would come or as soon as he finished college then he would come he would play one or two amateur events and then he quickly turned professional but so he was gone again so meeting him was not um that easy for me so it was all just you know things that would percolate down knowledge that would percolate down but through friends and through caddies and uh, coaches etc of how these people were performing and what they what they would be like and what they would say how they would go about their game etc etc so you know we look really look up to them um as golfing gods in india so much later did i get to know them um arjun first and then we played together in tolly and um jyoti i played with him a few times on the asian tour and so with jeev on 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 the asian tour and that was um my slow introduction to these guys so yeah. interesting so so uh, i have a lot of people that tune in to this podcast and you know they yeah. may be parents of of some budding sports stars you know they might be into other sports like could yes. be tennis could be other other games as well mm. so as they are let's say probably listening in you know to you share this journey mm-hmm. what would you say like what do you look at someone you know before you say that hey, i think this person has it in them to turn pro mm. can you tell them can can you tell it by by looking at how someone plays or or is it more a matter of of your inner desire there are a lot of juniors out there or even amateurs who haven't turned professional who actually do have the the skill and the talent right but there are a lot of other things that don't fall into place and that's why they don't turn professional one of course is do they really want to that does the the child really want to turn professional does the amateur really want to turn professional um number 2 is you know what what is the financial backing that he has what's his plan b you know i i i i it's is easy to just get into it and then see what happens but i've seen too many cases where the person gets into it doesn't make it and then he's he's waited 3 4 years now and has lost those 3 4 years in some other field so and but i've seen a bunch of my friends actually um turn professional leave it and then go to another uh, line of work and have um, thankfully done well enough in the other line of work also but it's not that you know i look at a child and go like yeah he'll be a good professional you never know what it takes i mean even when it, uh, a, a person turns professional you never know he may be a damn good amateur he may be a really good amateur top class amateur and he doesn't make it it's happened i've seen it um uh it's it's you have to have some some sort of a your character comes into play your desire comes into play your ability to sacrifice a lot of other things in your life that comes into play there's so many things that you look at um the child the best person to tell uh whether this is going to happen or not is the parent him, him or herself you know so it, it it's a very big responsibility when somebody comes up to me and says what should i do with my my child you know it's for me that that is the that's the deadliest question somebody can ask me ask me because it's it's like my god that's a massive responsibility because if i'm going to give my opinion and say yeah go turn professional they don't make it they'll look back and say you know but he said <laughs> so yeah. it's 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 not as easy as just saying yeah there are too many things to look at right right so, i mean talent is one part of the talent equation talent is just one part of the equation so if you can tell what does your average year look like as a pro yeah that's uh, depends on which tour you play uh, if you play the pgti tour 18 to 20 events i'm i'm guessing uh, if you play the asian tour you got a few more than that of course now asian tour is looking even better 
but the maximum i've played in a in a, in a period of 8 8 10 months is uh, 26 events in about 8 months it about that much time and that was on the uh, then nationwide which became, became the web.com tour which now is the con ferry tour i played a lot of golf 26 events in 7 8 months is a lot of golf in fact i remember finishing off the year at uh, playing 18 out of 19 events in a row wow that's and i, I felt I felt ill at the end of it i had fever playing my last event etc but it was a lot of golf i mean that's what a professional's life can look like it all depends on um, how much you want to play you you kind of need to sometimes uh, plan it such that you peak at the correct time you need rest and then you play again you need rest and play again but the thing is in very very competitive tours if you haven't played well in the first half of the year you you kind of have to play everything because I, this is how this is what happened on the web.com with me is um, if you play and you don't make cut you're going to fall back uh, 10 spots 10 places in the ranking if you play and then you just make cut you're still going to fall back 10 10 spots in the ranking if you play you make cut and you finish halfway you probably fall back five places and then if you play make cut finish top 20 you probably not moving you're about the same ranking as you were that the previous week you have to actually play very well on that kind of a tour where there's less money and a, a lot of competition you got to play very well to you know make a move up the the, the rankings so a lot of people are playing a lot of golf and so i saw on the japan tour also you may be one of the top players but you are playing every week all these top guys they there every week you know they finish sunday monday morning i'm i'm there at the range at the next event the guy just won the the, the day before and he's on the range the next day you know he might take a day off but he's there the next the, the next week so, so when do you practice between tournaments that's another that's another good question the your tournament you should, you kind of have to be ready If you if you start playing tournaments like 5 6 in a row you have to be ready so you finish on sunday you travel on monday you you play practice round on tuesday there's a pro am on wednesday and then you start again on thursday that's how it is so if your game is not on there's no real time to get it on you need to basically be ready to play golf as soon as you hit the professional circuit you don't have time to take off you're going to have to do all your work in the off season if you have an off season sometimes some tours have off seasons in summer and some tours uh, during now december time early january time and then they start again then you're off and running so to for the for the amateurs they need to be ready they need to get their coaches they need to figure out their swings they need to work on their mental side of the game all before they start turning professional they can't say like because a lot of them just get into it and like oh this is what it takes Oh now I got to start working on this and this part of my game. No, you got to you got to do it pronto. You know? And it I makes think sense, right because pro is where people are are actually earning their living, right? Exactly. It's, it's not a joke. Yeah. I mean like we may look uh, look like uh, it, it's fun, but uh, it's if you're playing bad golf, it's a nightmare. I've been on both sides of the spectrum where I've had brilliant brilliant years and have really really bad years. You know, you can make a lot of money and then you can make no money now it all depends whether you have enough uh, you know reserves if you have a sponsor behind you or not that that can actually really change your mood if you don't have a sponsor you're going to you're going to go through a lot of highs and lows uh, but if you have a sponsor at least you know somebody's backing you you're not that stressed out yeah. now to get sponsors to sponsor us is another art i think <laughs> <laughs> can you do it yourself or do you have to work with a manager like a someone who can get you sponsors most of my life i did it on my own, on my own. only lately people are actually stepping up to become a manager they see some sort of uh, you know money in it um on the indian and asian tour last year was the first year i had had a manager he's a friend of mine the first year i've had a manager my first manager was in when i joined the japan tour in 
they need a manager you need a manager there especially the foreigners they need managers right so um do you need a manager you can do it on your own is life easier with a manager yes definitely do you have the money to pay pay the manager that's another question you know <laughs> it all depends on how much your manager is charging you for the year sure now for all these travel that you're doing from one tournament to another yes who's taking care of the logistics like how do you get there where you stay air fare plane bus so let's talk about how i used to do it and i used to do everything basically you uh, you figure you you get your venue where you, where you're playing and you get um where you're staying the hotel the the tour actually uh, recommends where to stay so it's your it's up to you you can stay there or you you pick a place nearby now back in the day no google no google maps nothing no information on the oh. internet there's no internet forget about it no internet how to figure out you know as juniors you you stay with friends family here there in india but when tra- traveling abroad you need a you need a, a hotel name you know you need something so that the, the tour used to help us out with that so you know you keep going back to the same hotels and the same golf courses so you know after a few years you know what to do how to do it getting there you need a travel agent uh, one thing you really need to be prepared with is is a credit card you basically <laughs> have one or two credit cards the more credit cards the better because it's it's like a backup you this one doesn't work then this one will work right and they both don't work then you better have cash so back in the back in the day we used to lot, use a lot of cash uh you know we used to carry 1000 2000 dollars with us um some for those who didn't have as much money it was even less um but we had we had to have these options you know caddy takes uh, only cash then the next week uh, caddy can take uh, you have to pay the uh, the club the that you're doing by credit card you know you're paying paying your hotels by credit card then uh, the bookings of the hotels were done through the tour uh, but the player used to book the hotel say okay write in the email say i'm i am coming in this time leaving this time you know basically be your own manager kind of thing and we have a travel agent in india you get one do your ticketing um if they screwed it up it's on you <laughs> if you land up on the wrong day friend of mine landed up in the wrong city <laughs> we went to vietnam friend of mine instead of going to ho chi minh he landed up in hanoi some something like that you know he's like because he he stepped out of the he stepped out of the airport and he tells the taxi driver i want to go to this uh, um hotel he looks at it and goes okay it'll take you uh, two days <laughs> He's like what? <laughs> so you know, th- then he realized he was in the he's in the wrong city. Then he went back in, got another flight, flew to the next city, etc. So you gotta you gotta know what you're doing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so the pro life is not easy. And then how about food? Because yeah, I mean, what what's, what's the diet for golfer look like? Because we all so, think of golf as yeah, you know, it's a, it's a comfortable sport, right? That's what the external world looks like, right? Amazing golf courses. Yeah. You probably have I don't know four course buffet every time you eat and all that. <laughs> yeah we we could do that uh, okay see so for me growing up not much money i didn't have that much money so we always looking to go to a place where it's cheaper you know have uh, literally one there was one few weeks in korea we would eat subway sandwiches every meal we'd actually buy a foot long have half for breakfast have half for lunch and then in for dinner we'd be back in the hotel so we'd go out nearby to some sort of a restaurant but we kind of were pretty frugal um, back in the day of course nowadays people are making more money and people are sponsors this that not we can splurge a little bit more but um, yeah it was uh, it was it was not easy back in the day to do all this you there's a the, the reason why there are, n- are not as many indians on the asian tour i think is because a lot of them actually don't can't eat the food that the asians eat you know there's a lot of non vegetarian food out there right there's a lot of pork there's a lot of beef and we got we got uh, hindus here who don't eat beef or who don't eat pork you know muslims don't eat pork etc etc so it's something that uh, kind of dissuades you from going abroad and also the language barrier is there so i know there are a bunch of guys who are really really good at golf but they didn't make it or didn't go out or didn't want to go out of the country because they were uncomfortable So you know the, all these small small things that nobody would think about. It's amazing. There's also another curious part which I want to uh, touch upon is that uh, you know when you are playing golf and this is purely as a TV viewer. Yeah. Right, I'm I'm talking here. 
I mean, a, why do you need a caddy? You said you know, yeah. caddy costs money. I see, I'm a, I'm a good guy. Always try to save money. <laughs> you know that that guy is always you know there to carry your bag. I mean, <laughs> I can carry my bag. Yeah. What does a caddy help you with? Yeah, it, they are important, especially for a professional. As an amateur, you know, let's start with the junior. The juniors, they actually make them carry their bags. It actually makes them more proficient in in the game. The, the decision making, etc., becomes better. You know, club selection become becomes better. You get to know yourself and the game much better. I think it's a good thing to make juniors carry their own bag. Now, coming to amateurs, you, obviously you have the selection. Now you can I can get a carry or not not have a carry. Um, as a professional or or as a good amateur who's playing uh, on the world stage, you need a carry because. the amount of energy that you're putting in into a round that 6 hours 6 and a half hours sometimes the day becomes longer if it's if it's raining you're you're there the whole day so if you're carrying carrying the bag making decisions playing the game uh, working out warming up doing all that on your own you're going to get worn down you got over a period of 2 3 4 1 month 2 months we play so 2 months straight right um that that means golf every day maybe one day off like monday off you're playing good the, the better you play the more you play right so if you if you're carrying your bag it's going to wear you out so if there is somebody who who can help you out and and picking a caddy is also you need to know who you've brought along with you sometimes you think yeah some guy gets along with you so let's take him as a caddy and it doesn't work out because you get to know the guy more and more uh, on the golf course and you realize yeah we kind of don't gel or don't think the same way so maybe i want to take a decision of doing this and he says no do do that then you know it becomes it becomes an issue so you kind of got to get to know the guy first then you decide whether you can uh, take him on tour or, or wherever you're going for the event so you do need a caddy they are important and how do they help you with your decisions like do they help you select Uh, like do they help you analyze the course do they help you select yes. uh, the the strategy for yes, like they take, do. i mean these are the clubs you take out yes here's what you should do so in my career starting off um i would depend a lot on the caddy you know especially in a junior sub junior you don't know what you're doing caddy knows he's carried for x amount of years etc so they know what they're doing um as you move along you get to know more so then you start saying okay you know let let us work together kind of thing you know you you suggest something i suggest something we'll see if it works out you 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 take those steps together and for me that worked out with a few caddies i had to change the, the guy i got now also is very good his name is raghavendra he's very good but i had to work with him and uh, teach him a lot about how to caddy now any tom dick and harry at the club thinks he's a caddy but what we require as caddies is is a lot more than what they think they can give us um because selecting a club or giving you a line that's just one part of it it's how do you interact with each other what are you guys talking about on the golf course you know is he taking your mind off the game or is he are you guys so involved in the game that it's not good for you you know there's this the, the, the mental aspect of it comes into play and so rags and me have been together since 2000 Fourteen, I think, and uh, he's learned a lot. Another thing is, that, what language do you communicate in? I found for me to communicate in, in Hindi was more difficult than it is for me to communicate in English. You know, I'm trying to say something in in Hindi, it's not coming across exactly how I wanted to. You know, uh, it's 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 a little frustrating for, for me not to be able to say what I'm trying to say, or he's saying something, he means something else. It's 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 a bit of a confusion. Uh, so language, language plays a bit of a role. it's uh, interesting and does the caddy help you sledge i'm sure you got you talk to each other right you can tell <laughs> the caddy <laughs> oh there's a lot of sledging in in amateur golf as in like really? club club golf but not not that much in uh, professional or top level top level amateur golf there's uh, it's a gentleman sport so we don't we don't sledge each other there's no like disturbing the other guy or or telling him that they, something at in inappropriate at the wrong time you know so we let them play their game they let us play our game so wait you have let's say you are at a uh, at a hole with yeah. you know with so, like two people are competing for that hole right yeah. and yeah. 
it's silence between the two teams like throughout yeah. the that yeah. whole yes nothing not a word nothing said. well if he's your friend you may talk to him i've had weeks and weeks of golf without really talking to you know my playing partners they they probably sometimes they don't even know the know the language like english they don't even know the language they'll be uh, just walking around playing and you'll be walking around playing and you'll might say hi hello whatever it is um and say this is this your home course or, or where do you play somehow communicate to them these very few things introduce yourself etc but there are no long conversations walking down fairways etc unless they are your friends you know then you then you can have a good time um but still you'd be surprised how many close friends they'll play with each other they won't talk as much and i i, I saw this uh, with with my friend uh, he's a thai boy uh, my friend coconut uh, panufol pitayarat he's off the golf course he's absolute joker we we'll, we love hanging out with each other but I, 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 my name got paired with him in one of the events in Malaysia or something. I got very excited and all. You know, we'll, we'll have a good time tomorrow, etc. We'll talk, etc. We got on the tee, congratulate, uh, wished each other, and teed off. The guy didn't talk for 18 holes, and I was like, "Who is this guy now?" You know, it, it was so different. So even if he's your friend, doesn't mean he's going to talk. It, he, everybody gets into their head, you know. So, but something that as you grow older, you kind of like relax more. You're able to talk more. You're able to kind of switch on and off um, as you go along the golf course. So it's really a game which you're playing, you know, between your ears. Between your ears. And what's the temptation like? Because let's say the day when you are not playing well. Yeah. I'm sure you've had those days where <laughs> your mind says one thing, but what? physically gets ex- executed is another matter correct how often do you are you tempted to tamper with your swing, swing or your processes and all that right wow. but because the other person might be hitting better great question but, but we, we we get tempted quite a bit um we want to change things as we go along your your coach will go okay we're practicing this so one move stick to this okay so we practice whatever comes tournament day we start playing it's not really going well and you get so tempted to start doing what you used to do you know something that you're familiar with as opposed to you know no i need to do this new thing because it it's probably good for me in the long run we like oh, no 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 listen i i need to score <laughs> we go back to that kind of kind of mentality which is not really good always because you need to move ahead if you're not going to do it now you're going to do it somewhere sometime in the future and if you're playing a lot of golf you don't have time so might as well do it now so to change your swing too much is not a good idea don't keep going back and forth from what you used to to what you you know are trying to do at the moment it's so really uh, about picking up process that you're yes. going to persist with correct. probably over a correct. period of time correct. regardless of the results right correct you got to be like a little bit like jeev i mean like he may not have a very pretty swing but the the guy is stubborn about his swing he will do that one thing over and over again and that's why he became world in this, this world player because no matter what he was doing it was repeated over and over again so the the results were the same i mean it, it's it's in any, anything right you do the same thing over and over again your results will kind of be the similar thing whether it be good or whether it be bad you're going to have similar results because you're doing the same thing over and over again and that's what we we um, try to say to the juniors and the amateurs is like try and do the same process every time and how do they work on the mental aspects of the game how do they keep themselves so strong because all you said it it takes a physical toll yes but then you got to have that inner strength to again persist the whole duration correct how, uh, how do you work on that well i guess um if you're if you are really up to the, up to the task you have a certain mindset anyway you as a person Uh, the athlete as a person has that mindset anyway you know because sometimes i look at myself and i'm like oh, i'm still at this after so many years doing same kind of thing over and over again traveling this that it's all the same thing over and over again right and i'm like i i, I get impressed with myself sometimes you know and um, you got to pat yourself on the back sometimes saying you know well done for staying around for so long but you need to basically be that kind of a person already and if you're not there are ways to 
become that person you need you obviously you're talking to, to psychologists uh, sports psychologists and stuff like that you talk to other players you talk to coaches you know you're going through uh, through that uh, golfing life and you're basically kind of molding yourself to what is required for golf so there are ways you read books you you watch movies or you watch documentaries you, you hear other players talk about stuff if you are lucky enough to be- befriend a, a really uh, good player absolutely pick his pick his brain you know it's it's really worth it it's um, and i think most most guys are up to answering questions so yeah i mean this is a fascinating world that you you shared with me rahul because <laughs> you know again watching on tv yeah you get to appreciate that it, it's a difficult sport yeah. uh, you, you guys cannot use uh, or girls cannot use these uh, golf carts right for the tournament yeah. you have to walk yeah. we do so only the amateur i think the club members they can use uh, uh, carts we sometimes are allowed because the golf course is too hilly to walk there's one golf course in in koh samui in thailand which it's so hilly we have to use carts but actually professional golf and top amateur uh, golf is, we we all walk so you have to have a certain amount of physical ability they want to level the playing field so you know no no uh, handicaps etc and how much time does it take to master that birdie putts because that's the area which gets focused a lot yes and one thing i clearly remember so i used to live in san diego for a while and i've mm. seen tiger woods play and So there's this crazy shot that he's hit at the Torrey Pines golf course. The last part. I was there when it when yes. it happened. Wow, was, you were there. Lucky I, you. I, I had no idea what I was doing there. I was like, <laughs> I go with Scott Dickna, so I was there. Yeah, uh, he had that effect. So many people don't know anything about golf, but they lined up to watch Tiger. So uh, yeah, short game. That's basically the short game. Chipping, putting, mostly putting. It's quite important because more than half the game is just putting, and. I mean, just don't realize it. They, they they don't spend enough time time putting and chipping. They like to see the ball fly. They like to hit it far. They like to hit it straight. All that's good. But half the game, if you count the number of parts, sometimes it's mostly thirty or thereabouts. For amateurs, it's a little bit more than that also. Which is basically, if 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 you're playing a par seventy two course, if you're having thirty parts, like it's almost half. So if you're not practicing your putting and your chipping, you're wasting a lot of time. so you need to basically figure out you get get a good uh, putting coach um get some good drills do a lot of drills i mean i cannot emphasize this uh, more than you know you have to do so many drills it's like i i i've over the years i've come across all my friends are real top players they they all do drills uh, it's small uh, competitive games they might play with another player but oh, they, they may might do these drills on their own it's still competition it's still um noting down statistics if you don't do statistics you have to start statistics you know don't waste time i wasted a lot of time back in the day there was i mean my my old coach brandon he did start me off on doing statistics but it it didn't stick i should have done it since i was 14 i should have done it from then on all the time um but i didn't and i think one of the reasons why the americans uh, surge ahead in the world of sport is because they'll give you statistics for everything man <laughs> everything that they measure measure system. measure every sport yeah they have statistics whether you ate lunch or at the wrong time also <laughs> yeah so, and yeah. i think at at a certain level you do require that level of focus and determination yes like not just the measurement part but correct convert that measurement into hey this is what i should act upon correct correct and execute relentlessly yes. execute yes. i mean the best thing to do is actually um go to a coach go to a professional golfer who's playing on tour he tell you exactly how it is what you have to look at when you're putting and chipping and why are you deciding i'll use this club and not this club you know there are various ways to look at it so he tell you whether your way is good or or not uh you but the, only top players or uh, sorry professional players or coaches will do this for you for if you go to another amateur player and then take advice from them they may give you few tips here and there but it's it's not the whole thing so don't waste time uh, you know kind of getting tips you know go to a professional get your game solid so yeah 
Amazing, Rahul. It's been an, a very fascinating discussion with you, and I think the more I, I speak with you, I get the feeling that you can be a strategic advisor. Like, oh wow, not just in the in the world that of, would be something of sports, but you know, a lot of what you're saying does a, apply in the corporate world as well. Yes, it does. It's just that you know our world doesn't tend to speak more about it. It's not shown on TV, but if true, it was, true. then you'll see parallels. But what yes. you're doing is is brilliant, man, and. You no know, thank you for sharing all this with us absolutely absolutely anytime anyone yeah all right rahul uh, thanks so much so you know thanks for having me here and uh, later on please do share your coordinates i'll publish it on the podcast absolutely thank you so much ivan thank you